What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it's that time of the week we're talking weekly rotation and there's some standouts. This isn't a typical rotation. There's some newer stuff to the collection and some stuff I haven't reached for in a long time that are absolutely stunning and quite unique fragrances as well. So like I said, standouts. Collection standouts. I might even have that in the title or something. I don't know. Not sure what the, you know, I'm going to title it exactly, but I always try to tie it to the theme of the week. And I actually don't plan a theme. It just kind of, how it shakes out, I reflect at the end of the week. I film the video and be like, that's kind of how it went. We're going to title it that way. And that's probably what's going to happen here with week number 203 in the week of rotation. So stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday, I wore this during the day. I wore this in the evening. I didn't think I was going to like this one as much as I do. It's not crazy unique, but for what it is, I think it's really good. It's quite the blue fragrance. I've been enjoying it. It's Mercedes-Benz Ultimate. Very much a cedarwood dominant fragrance with some fruity apple and some dense greens that provide a bit of freshness, aromatic fresh green type of smell, cypress, stuff like that, a little bit of lavender. I believe lavender's in there. But cedar, cedar leaf combo with some green apple. Really dominate this fragrance, a little bit of cypress. This is good stuff. I really, really like this one. It smells super good. Similar to Greenlee at different stages. Through and through, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one with Greenlee type of thing. Because like I said, this is much more of a cedarwood fragrance than anything else. If you're not a fan of that, you won't like it. Performance is pretty good. Gotta say, nothing crazy. Six, seven, eight hour range, so call it six to eight hour range. I've been enjoying it. I'm thinking about, you know, maybe doing a full review to dive a little bit deeper than what it is now. But the gist of it is that's how it smells. That's how it performs for me. It's a great everyday wear, woody aromatic type of fragrance. And does that make it stand out in a collection? Not necessarily, but when it's one that you keep reaching for, is it really not a standout anymore if you keep going back to it? You see where I'm going here during the day and out the shower that evening. All day long Sunday, basically, was Mercedes-Benz Ultimate. Moving into Monday, this is a brand new fragrance to the collection. Uh, very, very deep, fresh rose fragrance. A lot of citruses, uh, but definitely has a watery rose smell. It's a little smoky, uh, woodsy, and spicy. It's, it's got a lot of nuance to it. It's Mancera's Midnight Gold. This is definitely not one that you really hear anybody talk about super super underappreciated fragrance because there's just so many releases year in and year out from Pierre Montal for both his brands Mancera and Montal so some good stuff just flies under the radar a lot of times if it doesn't get some kind of hype from somewhere not too many people are going to randomly check it out I'm not saying this is necessarily hype worthy but man I like it if you just want a fresh fragrance that's Gonna have some really good staying power, but not exactly smell like designer, run-of-the-mill, blue fragrance type of stuff. Fragrances like Mancera's Midnight Gold fits that mold. Didn't mean to rhyme, just kind of happened. Like I said, you gotta like rose, though. Definitely a fresh Turkish rose type of smell. Like I said, a little bit of citruses, spice, woods, aromatics. Like There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's some depth, there's some complexity. Without it smelling too busy, but... It's perfectly unisex, but it does have just as many masculine tones to it as it does feminine leaning because of the florals and the heavy dose of rose. Makes it feminine leaning. It's a little powdery because of the rose, uh, but it's also watery, spicy, and woodsy, which kind of bring it right back down the middle. So I think it's a perfectly unisex fragrance that more people should absolutely check out. I mean, it's Mancera. You can get it for a good price. You're going to smell really good. It's going to perform really well. Kind of checks out the, all the boxes, right? During the day. The underappreciated Mancera Midnight Gold. Then I got the shower. I had just talked about this one in the video, in a, in a particular video, a Fragrance World video. So I sprayed it that night. Fragrance World's Imperium, their clone of Raja Parfums Elysium Parfum Cologne. Is it exactly one to one? No, it's definitely not. It's a little bit more fresh, spicy, not quite as sharp and metallic. Still has the black currant and the grapefruit and. The woody nuance as it dries, it's overall Elysium Parfum Cologne. Just has a little bit of a slightly more fresh spicy twist. I like that about it. it. Smells really good. I love wearing this one. And you can get it really cheap. 
that's always a good thing. You can typically find this one for under 30 bucks most places. And it is on that upper echelon of affordable Elysium clones, in my opinion. It's definitely a good one. It's one worth checking out. Out the shower, just a nice, fresh, metallic citrus and Fragrance World's Imperium. Moving into Tuesday is mass appealing, but unique. Mass appealing, smells generically unique. How's that for a phrase? Generically unique. When you first smell it, it's kind of weird. And it's like, but have I smelled this before? Because I heard a lot of that, but with why I sell myself, it doesn't remind me of any specific fragrances. And this is one that I know for me, and I've seen for a few others, the more you spray, the more you really start to enjoy this one. And that has absolutely been my experience. I'm digging this one more and more, guys. I heard a lot of polarizing stuff leading into me just blind buying it. Didn't test it first, nothing. Just went for it. Fragrance buy, got it discounted. And see, I, I absolutely love that first spray now. Where it was a little weird the way the orange blossom and citrus came across at first, but it's kind of like how Dylan Blue was for me, which I didn't like Dylan Blue. I didn't not double negative, didn't not like this at first. I just wasn't impressed. It was just, it was okay. It's a little different, but nothing crazy. Um, I'm really digging this one. It's becoming a love for me, guys. So sample first, not a blind buy safe type of fragrance, but it's definitely one that will grow on you. I've seen it happen, you know, to be the case for a lot of people, and especially for myself during the day. Why well, sell myself full review coming very, very soon for those of you that are interested in stuff like that. And then when I got the shower, it's time for a good shave. Now, this is another one, mass appealing, but quite unique. Tobacco blossom, creamy, powdery, smooth, fresh. I don't even remember what shave soap I used, but I used the Bulgari Blue aftershave lotion and gave myself some sprays of the fragrance. One of the most underappreciated men's designers of all time. This is such a good fragrance. Love how it's painted blue glass and right through the middle it's all clear. You want to talk about smelled phenomenal. I smelled phenomenal. Just drop the bottle, no big deal. As long as I didn't drop this one, we're okay, right? There it is, that creamy, powdery, slightly earthy, but mega fresh, cozy, like laundered blanket, cottony feel. Like there's a lot going on here for such a simplistic fragrance. And I find it wildly unique. I don't have anything else that smells like Bulgari Blue in my 1500 fragrance wall behind me. Not a thing. It's super unique. It deserves to get in my rotation more often. And I'm going to grab that aftershave. Because it was going to drive me nuts just sitting there on the floor. So I had to pick it up because it's part of the conversation right now. And this was part of a gift set. That's why I have it in the first place. And... Very soothing. I typically don't like aftershave lotions. I'm more of an aftershave splash type of guy, but skin was feeling smooth and smelling great. Out the shower, super unique and fresh, Bulgari Blue. Moving into Wednesday, I just wore something during the day. I gave myself a break that evening because this stuff never seems to go away. It was radiating off of my skin all day long. Six sprays I'm starting to think is a little too much for me, honestly. Uh, really been digging this one. It's uh, definitely much richer and much stronger than its lab sample batch. I got to say, the brand new release is a Haroff Signature Aurum Raw Animalistic Honey Clove Cinnamon Stick. It's called Cinnamon Bark, but it smells like a cinnamon stick. A little bit of hazelnut and some vanilla, stuff like that. Touch of gourmand fastest to it with a sticky amber. So good. I like honey, though. Raw honey. You got to be into it. It's definitely a good fragrance. To sniff on, it's uh, Amber Gourmand is the way it's being classified. And I think that's a brilliant classification because it absolutely comes across that way. It's very ambery, resinous, and sticky, but sweet and delicious in many ways. Also from honey, hazelnut, almond, vanilla, things like that. Good stuff. Be mindful of the sprays, though. Your nose might wear out a little bit, but this stuff's like glue on your skin. It just radiates and radiates and radiates. During the day, and I didn't wear anything out the shower. New Zaharoff Signature Aurum. Moving into Thursday, another quite unique fragrance that's a little polarizing. This is very much a standout in my collection. The majority of, aside from Fragrance World Imperium, it's all been pretty much standouts in my collection, whether it's I just gravitate to them or they don't smell like anything else in my collection. And that is the case 
with Boss Bottled Oud Aromatic. This doesn't smell like anything else in my collection. This is earthy, sticky green. This is another one that has a resinous smell to it. Dense, earthy, woody green smell. But still bright and aromatic. It's, it's a weird composition. I could see how some people wouldn't like this fragrance, but it actually speaks to me, especially for these fall days that we've been experiencing. Cool day. This works. This is some good stuff. I can imagine this being terrible in the heat, though. Oddly enough, no, no real oud smell. I don't get much of anything anyhow. But kind of a piney, green, earthy, fir balsam, cypress, pine needles kind of greenery here. Patchouli-ish um, with kind of a, like a... just I don't even know specifically what type of resin, but it's, it's a little sticky, tauric, uh, sappy, I think. Kind of a, a tree sap type of consistency that's what I'm the, the phrase I'm looking for uh, tree sap that kind of sticky consistency uh, dry wood smell just like I said quite unique love this fragrance absolutely love this fragrance and I've seen that some people don't share the same sentiment but hey to each their own it's subjective I like it you might not neither of us are wrong it's just a taste thing right but during the day very unique for my collection super happy to have this one boss bottled oud aromatic and then when I got out the shower, this is definitely not uh, super unique or anything, but it's a beautiful, sharp, juicy lemon, Italian lemon smell, some fresh green spices and woods. It is Dunhill Driven Blue, Dunhill, eau de, Dunhill Driven Eau de Toilette, whatever have you that you would like to call it. This I've been enjoying. It's two weeks in a row it's been in the rotation. I picked it up last week at the rack stores, TJ Maxx, 15 bucks. It's one of my favorite rack store pickups of the year. Absolutely well worth the $15. I love that sharp lemon, and it's not a synthetic sharpness either. It smells like a fresh cut lemon, that type of sharpness. Just really good stuff. I've been talking about it a lot lately. Nothing extra to add that I haven't talked about before. It's not unique, but it smells really good and definitely the best $15 pickup I've had in a while. Out the shower, Dunhill Driven Eau de Toilette, Dunhill Driven Blue. Moving into Friday, we went back to the well. I wore Zaharoff Signature Aurum once again. I mean, it's just, it's so damn enjoyable. It's good stuff. Uh, definitely have a full review up on the channel if you want to check it out. Because I'm so glad it's more of a, a resinous amber than it is just like a snack cake gourmand type of thing. Because I'm not a big gourmand guy. Those That's probably the most situational thing for me. i got to be in the mood for something that just smells like dessert. You know, uh, that's why I don't wear Ferragamo Womo all that much because it smells like a coffee cake to me. It smells phenomenal. I just got to be in the mood for it. Whereas this, I could get down with a bit more because there's, there's a lot more amber spice and honey dominance here versus, you know, loads of hazelnut and vanilla and stuff like that, which I like that stuff, but in moderation in certain situations. And that's how it is on my skin. With this, absolutely love this fragrance. So I went back to the well once again during the day. Zaharoff Signature Aurum. And then back to back nights. I was loving it. So we went back to the well with Dunhill Driven Blue. Said everything I had to say in the last segment. So back to back nights out the shower. Dunhill Driven Blue. Finally, on Saturday, it was nice to go back to this one. It's been a little while. Um, it's there's still an argument for it being, you know, one of the best of the house. It was my favorite from Kajal Perfumes before Lamar came out. Lamar is still my number one. This is a close second though. I think, because it is super unique and year-round signature scent worthy. It is the original Kajal Ohm. Such a beautiful orange blossom, mandarin orange. I believe it's mandarin orange. Tonka bean oud. Powdery, sweet, woodsy, not too funky. A little fleshy flower, orange blossom smell, a lot of orange. You get a lot of orange up top. Really good performance without being, let's get this focus back. Really good performance without being overwhelming. So, try to bring that focus back real quick. I saw it kind of got stuck, but look at this atomizer too. Nice mild spritz. God, that smells beautiful. I wore this earlier today. I wore six sprays of this, and it was plenty. It was just right. Five to seven sprays is the sweet spot for this one because it's not crazy beast mode, but it is on the very strong side. God, this smells so good. I smell it floating out in the air. This is such a great fragrance, guys. Sample this one. Try it. Uh, this is the original main recommendation from the house for me. I've been enjoying this one for years. It's the very first fragrance I got from the house. I feel like I started off hot with this one because it is that good. I think it's the most signature, unique signature scent worthy fragrance from the house because, again, Masa 
one of their newest releases. That's a phenomenal, slightly unique signature scent. But this, I've never smelled anything like this specific orange, orange blossom, tonka bean, oud combination. And it works in the heat, guys. It works so well in the heat, even though that note breakdown sounds like it probably would be cloying. To me, it's not. During the day, it was an absolute pleasure to revisit this one. It's the original Kajal Ohm. And then when I got out the shower a little while ago, wearing it right now, Penguin Premium Blend. Fresh, minty green, aquatic. Nothing special, but kind of special. I mean, for 15 bucks, this is a 15, it used to be a $15 fragrance. I would love for that, there we go, to get the focus back. Autofocus has been acting up because I have such a busy background. This is so good. Like a three-hour fragrance. You know, it's nothing special here in performance, but you could just spray it heavy and enjoy. It's one of the better super cheap rack store pickups that you, you tend to come across a lot. I've seen this in different TJ Maxx's especially so many times in different states over the years. It pops up. It's kind of a seasonal thing. They always carry Penguin stuff, Marshalls and, um, and TJ Maxx. That's kind of the main place to find them. And if you come across it, any of the Penguin fragrances are good. None of them are great. No, I wouldn't put any of them in that great tier, but they're all pretty good, at least pretty good. And this one I would say is on the higher end of pretty good for them. 15 bucks, great out the shower, gym fragrance, hot summer's day, refresher type of thing. It's good stuff. It's serving its purpose here tonight, I'll tell you that. Out the shower, Penguin Premium Blend. Well, guys, that was this week's rotation, week number 203. And until next time, do me a favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What'd you guys wear? Sound off in the comments. My favorite comments to read every week is my favorite format to read. I mean, to do, to film. Got twisted up in my words, but yeah, it's my favorite across the board. I love doing this. Love talking to you guys about what, you know, what I wore this past week. Not counting... In the event I do wear something to the gym, those don't make the rotation. I used to do gym rotations, but I, I don't wear fragrance that often to the gym anymore. I kind of give myself a break when I go to the gym because uh, I just wear so many fragrances on a daily basis testing stuff. And then uh, same thing with like when we go to dinner and, or run errands. Those don't make the rotation. This is like the main sense for the day is what's in these particular videos. So uh, I definitely wear more than what you saw here in this past week. I wore more than that. But that was what it was all about. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the main fragrances from this past week and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.